Okay, welcome to theCUBE. We are live here in San Francisco, um, California for VMworld for now three and a half days of live coverage. Um, we had three days. Jeff, we added in that today because one, we're still here um, with the setup and we're going to go you know, extra, extra mile, talk to some great guests. Uh, we got the Vanessa Alvarez going to come on shortly, but really this is a wrap up of VMworld. Great show, everyone's kind of winding down, all the booths are gone, and it's just the last minute, last keynotes, last sessions. I'm John Furrier, the founder. I'm looking at I'm joined my co-host, Jeff Frick, because Dave Vellante flew back, he's back in Boston, and he's been ready for his the next trip. Jeff, Great to see you again. You too, yeah. I, I talked to Dave this morning, we actually had a meeting. So, uh, you know, kudos to you and Dave for going, uh, going strong for three days plus. We also had the bonus event with the NetApp coverage uh, Tuesday night at AT&T Park. And I know uh, the official VMworld party was last night at, at AT&T Park. Part of the, the, the thing that goes on at these conferences obviously is the sessions, but also there's the, all the vibe afterwards and there's been a lot of events. So give us a little update on how that went last night at AT&T. Party was great. Number of the parties at these shows, you know, EMC World, Oracle, Open World, this in, involves music, a band of some sort. Uh, but and, and they usually had some, you know, hall room here at Moscone or you know, loud party and drinking. But they held it at AT&T Park, where we had the NetApp uh, VIP event with the Cube there, and they had the entire field turned into a carnival live stage, and it was just a great event. I mean, probably the best ever for VMworld, no doubt. Um, people were happy, they were smiling, dancing on the field, their shoes off. I mean, I felt like I was in Golden Gate Park and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and everyone's like chilling out. It was really a great event. Carl Eschenbach kicked it off with a great speech. Um, VMworld's growing, their business is growing, and obviously it's their 10th anniversary, so this, the party was extra special. And I had a chance also to uh, hang with Carl and the uh, former CMO Rick Jackson and all the senior execs in the, uh, in the, in the private area yesterday and got to see them on a personal level. And it just reaffirms some of the things we've already known, which is great culture at VMware, great people. And again, their customers and their partners were all happy last night. It was really the best party um, I've been to for VMworld, certainly. And it rivals up there with any of the uh, events I've been to at, at these conferences. That's great. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the guest list we've had has just been phenomenal. So I, I look forward to going back, as the coaches say, and looking at the tape. Uh, Pat Gelsinger <laughs> yesterday morning kicked it off at 9 a.m. I think we're going to have that tape up uh, online so you can watch it. But even though the theme here has been a lot about 10 years of VMware and how things have changed so much, and there's something like 23,000 people running around here in all the Moscone centers and all over the streets of San Francisco hotels. But, you know, Pat said really, or not Pat, but um, Peter said it's really a renaissance today. So it's almost like a new, a new beginning and really the infrastructure and the pieces of virtualization as they move from simple compute into networking and storage is really enabling, I think as Pat said, to let businesses move at the speed of business and not at the speed of infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me it's really what highlights some of the, the key points here that's, is, that's, that, that doesn't get reported is, is the little uh, positioning, so the, the little gestures, the positioning of the vendors, and some of the conversations, and, and um, I took a break from theCUBE yesterday afternoon to go down to an event Intel had near the ballpark, AT&T Park. Jerry Rice was there. Uh, they were talking about big data and, and fantasy football, and really what's happening is a new user experience is developing Jeff, and I think if you look at what VMware is doing here, it's about, about being positioned to have the engine, the, the engine of the car, if you will, or the, the main technology to power, essentially new user experience. And so the Intel event with Jerry Rice was talking about how fans are changing their experience based on data. Fantasy football was kind of like the highlight. And it's, it's really, it's about new experiences. And I think, to me, I've always said in theCUBE is, it's about new expectations users have, and IT and the technology leaders haven't always thought about that. So we're in a new modern infrastructure, new modern time where a new user expectation is going to evolve uh, and new user, new user experiences. So the companies that can enable that and provide that will be winners. Certainly we talked to Sanjay Poonin here, who's heading up the end user experience. He came from SAP, which spent a lot of time on enterprise collaboration, but also when the iPad hit, SAP rolled out some really elegant and nice mobile solution. So I think that's a telegraph from Pat Gelsinger and, and Sanjay's former role that you're going to see VMware really enabling kick but mobile experiences, not as a device, but as enabling technology. And that's where virtualization will play well. Yeah, another part of the scene that's going on that not everybody can see uh, overtly is all the analyst um, presentations that I've been able to, to, to sit in on a couple of those, John. And quite a few of them said, and as Pat, another great quote, 
uh, you know, we're in the age of APIs, not UIs. And there were a number of companies that we met with in the, in the analyst briefings that said, you know, a couple of years ago they couldn't do what they're doing today, leveraging this infrastructure and leveraging the APIs of lots of different applications in new and innovative ways, and then bringing the horsepower to provide business insight and enable people to use technology to do things that they could never do before. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's really about, you know, really being on the track with the right technology. And I was just reading an article, I just got a note from Beth Parasu from uh, Tech Target, who's a great reporter. She just reported that uh, VMware is splitting vCloud Director into, into vCenter and vCloud Automation. And, and that's really a, an indication, small little piece of news, but very relevant because you look at the orchestration, then some of the things that make those end user experiences happen is about putting the right technology in the right group. So that's a significant announcement because management software and the management and the automation is the critical differentiator for a lot of these vendors because if infrastructure as a service gets commoditized, if there's thousands of new servers out there in a new way, and you got OpenStack evolving, management is the key to success. And we've been hearing that throughout the show that management and moving up the stack has been critical. So, you know, again, VMware is doing extremely well. The growth of the conference has been fantastic. The people there are all jazzed up, they're all lined up, they're excited, they have very simple metrics, software-defined data center, hybrid cloud, and end user computing. So, the vibe is very positive, customers are happy, the employees are, are, are focused, and I think that is the, the, the thing that I walk away with. Yeah, and, and two, I just want to take a moment, you know, the, VM, VMware gave us a great setup here, if, if you're still at the show, come by, we're in Moscone South at the west end of the lobby, but I want to give a quick shout out, John, to some of our sponsors who enable us to come to these type of events and provide the coverage that we, that we can, and, uh, obviously VMware for really helping us out, Nutanix, uh, Fusion IO, a long time friend of the queue, Barracuda Networks, uh, Simplivity, uh, EMC, obviously we cover EMC's world and, and uh, I love to cover their events, Commvault, IO Data Centers, uh, a new sponsor for the queue, talking a little bit about kind of the next generation, because as you said in your interview with them, there, there has to be something somewhere at the end of the line, right? There are actually boxes in power. Uh, Virident, Juniper Networks, HP, Service Mesh, and Rackspace. Again, without the uh, generous underwriting support of our sponsors, we couldn't take our show out on the road. And again, if you if you're in the neighborhood, come by. You can see it's a good, it's a nice production that we uh, that we try to put on here at the yeah, Cube. Yeah, and I think that's the key to the success of the Cube. We want to go out and get that signal from the noise and, and report. And and I don't mind doing 13 hours of straight interviews like we did <laughs> Tuesday. You know, my eyes are bleeding a little bit today from the from the party last night and all the coverage. And we got some more news. Vanessa Alvarez is going to be up next, and she's awesome. She's now at a, at a company, but she was an, uh, a long time analyst, she's one of the early Clouderati uh, analysts, she's been there from day one on the cloud explosion, uh, knows everyone, so we're going to get her perspective just on a personal level, all of what she's doing now, so you know, it's just a great show, and without the generous support of our underwriters, we can't bring the cube, bring our perspective here, and, and, and make people uncomfortable, even Pat Gelsinger was a little bit uncomfortable when I, when I, you know, <laughs> I didn't know he was going to react that well to, to my, some of my comments, but it shows Pat's got the, got the fight in him, and he is believing uh, in his vision, so it's really exciting. Again, Gelsinger, Etchabach, all the top executives were here inside theCUBE, as well as customers, entrepreneurs, and you know what I'm excited about? The, the entrepreneurs, right? We had Peter Levine, who's a big time venture capitalist from Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, Jerry Chen uh, is a big time venture capitalist now with, with Greylock, he was at EM, uh, VMware for many, many years. And we had Steve Herod on, who was the CTO of VMware, now a VC. So you're seeing the VMware mafia, the V mafia is being called. Um, out there, you know, early employees out making investments, starting new companies. So VMware, I predict, will have an impactful market in Silicon Valley in the tech industry, and if this continues to track the way it is, they're going to be a very, very large growing company. Yeah, and, and, and as you said, I think in a couple interviews, it's all about the ecosystem. So not only their, their formal ecosystems with partners and technology partners that they foster in the company, but as people leave the company and go out and do their own ventures with that background and that, and that connection, uh, I think you'll see it, you've seen it before with other Silicon Valley success stories like PayPal, et cetera. So it is about the, the people, and that's really why we like to cover the tech athletes, because sure. there's technology at the end of the wire, but it's people that put it in play. Let me ask you a question. You've obviously been here in theCUBE, you've been watching all the interviews and, and greeting the guests, and also going out and scouring, looking for stories and, and, and putting your ear to the ground. What's your perspective? What did you learn, and what was your observation? Share with the crowd, because uh, you, you were behind the scenes doing a lot of uh, handshaking, meeting people, talking to people. What's your perspective? Uh, to me, I think it's, it's the juxtaposition position between it's been here for 10 years and you know we started at this really simple way of trying to virtualize things. I remember back the early ASP 
days. The application service providers where everyone was afraid of the internet and shared infrastructure and this and that. And now it's completely morphed and I think it was Levine that talked about going completely the opposite way with these itty bitty pieces of compute power, networking power, and, and some of the, the briefings we were in talking about this real move of virtualization from the very simple compute into networking, into storage, and really it being kind of the start of another chapter. So it's not, it's not closed at 10 years. It, it really feels like this was just an enabling step and now the momentum is really going. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'd like to share with the folks out there that, from my observations, again, getting into the, under the covers a little bit is that a couple of points that I'm, I'm excited about. One, VMware is, is transformed and positioned for the, for the new generation. And there's a lot of bets that they're making. And VMware's smart. Gonna, they will make their adjustments if, if their bets are a little bit off. And we might see that with hybrid cloud, however that morphs, but I think that's a great track. Two, the talent and the technology guys that the VMware has, they maintain that cultural tech mojo. Um, VMware's known to have tech geeks and real guys who care about technology. So, you know, it's like having a good mechanic work on your car. You want guys building good technology. So what you're, you're afraid of when you see companies change with either new leadership or market shifts is they lose their soul, right? I mean, we don't, and, and VMware has not lost their soul, Jeff. They have, they have that tech mojo. And yeah, you can, people complain about some things that they do, but at the end of the day, they have that leadership. And then at the executive level, they're focused on the business. I mean, I, you know, for the first time I see VMware, you know, really flexing their management muscles saying, hey, you know what? We're serious, we want to grow and build a, a, an economic engine. Yeah. You know, Carl is straight up, straight on his metrics. They have good sales, go to market focus. And again, they'll make the adjustments. So that was one point. Two, the technology people that are here understand that virtualization is going to change and enable. And that was really exciting. And you saw that uh, through a lot of the other interviews. So those are the two things that I say that were really, really uh, a highlight. And again, the ecosystem, I think that's going to be a conversation. And, what was the biggest surprise, John? You've been coming to these things forever. I mean, what was the thing that, was there anything that just kind of blew your doors that you did not expect at all? Um, I think what I was expecting was more of the same of the VMware. Hey, we're tech geeks. And I think what I was really blown away by is the growth focus of the management, and, and, and they've always done that before, but here it's like they see specifically a real big prize at the end of, at the end of this, and I think you know, Pat's focus of execution, and, he's a t and he knows technology, and you got Sanjay Pune, he knows tech, Carl knows tech, I mean these guys are tech guys, so Intel had that same concept, you know, if you were in marketing at Intel, you were an engineer, you right. didn't just get hired out of business school as a marketing right. degree. Right. You actually had chops and you had to have some, some, some tech chops. So again, VMware, is that was the biggest surprise. Um, on the interview side, I was really surprised on the Andreessen Horowitz um, really aggressively going after Pat on the vision and Mark kind of, you know, needling him a little bit on the whole vision of the compute side. And I think that's an open book. The management, the systems management, and what the compute will look like I think is still an open book and those bets are going to be won or lost. So to me, that's a simple, simple answer. You're either on the one side of the street or the other and, and if VMware is not on the right side of the street, it's going to hurt their growth. Yeah, well, and, and we've talked about many times with a lot of these larger tech companies that are continuing to try to maintain growth rates like a smaller startup or not necessarily a smartup, but a smaller company. How do you maintain that excitement? How do you maintain the growth on such a big and growing base? And I think the other kind of insightful thing that Pat said was, you know, we still have a long way to go in mobile, right? There's a lot of companies out there now that are in mobile first that are developing the mobile applications. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's obviously the extension of the, of the bring your own device, but um, they, do, they do have the excitement, they do say, you know, we're tech people that are excited about tech. I think you had a, a car analogy in one of the interviews talking about, if you want mechanics that are excited about cars, right? You want car people building cars and making cars, because they like cars, and there really seems to be a, a positive mojo where people are excited about the opportunities that they could do things before that they couldn't do before. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, VMware has a cultural following, and there's a cult following, that some people call it, they don't really like that, I don't like that word, but they have a, a very passionate passionate uh, fan base and their customers and their partners. I mean, people, I mean, because they're tech guys and they, right. they see virtualizations like magic really has changed the game in technology and it's still going to be that disruptive enabler. And I remember back in the days in the 80s when, when the standards were evolving, you had proprietary networks, you had TCP IP came out and literally created a new industry and created billions of dollars of wealth creation. And that one little element 3Com, Cisco, you name the companies from that spin off inter networking. That was a huge little, little disruptive enabler that just created massive wealth. I think that virtualization is our generation's enabler. And I think the wealth creation and the opportunity is going to be fantastic. So I think VMware smells that and they see it and they see cloud as the next data center. And, and I think the hybrid is the right approach. Again, I still think it's still not, not a done deal. Hence my comment about being a way station or halfway house. But I still think IT is, still needs to get muscled up and 
And every CIO that I talk to um, always talks privately around, yeah, the past 15 years has been consolidation, consolidation, consolidation. I haven't been working out, I have no muscle. Yeah. And, and now they're asked to essentially move mountains. So, you know, they need to have, you know, build up their strength in IT and technology and, and execute. So it's just not that easy. So that's kind of like what I'm, what I'm seeing as the big trend. Yeah, but it still seems to be a lot of horses for courses with the hybrid approach and using the different, different types of flavors of cloud, if you will, based on the workload and whatever the logic is around the business process. So let's get back to it. We got uh, a few more guests lined up today. We're excited, we're still at the VMworld 2013. Uh, we're going to go finish our this, the last wall, right? <laughs> our wall to wall to wall. Uh, we'll be right back with our first guest after the short break.